One day I was driving between Lagos and Ibadan. And uh, daddy began to speak to me. I told you I'm not a prophet. The, the prophet, one prophet that I know, that I know without any doubt, that is in the house today, is your bishop. God's word speaks to our lives. In him, in the word is light, and that light is the life of men. And that light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So God's word speaks to our lives. And God's prophet speaks to our moments. They show up at each time to unveil the mind of God concerning us. Hello dear, I know by the grace of God you are fine. When we talk about prophet, prophet existing, yes, I can tell you that the existence according to the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible makers understood that in the olden days, God was talking through the prophet. But in this end time, he has spoken through Jesus Christ. So there is no prophet. But a lot of conspiracies are all over the place that a lot of people are calling themselves prophets and seer. I don't know the reason why they call themselves all those things. So I don't know what they've seen. I don't know what they've heard. But the scriptures has been clear. I'm going to show you a quick video from Pastor Adeboi trying to let us understand that he knows only one prophet. Let's listen to what he said in this video. One day I was driving between Lagos and Ibadan. And uh, Daddy began to speak to me. Well, I've told you I'm not a prophet. The, the prophet, one prophet that I know, that I know, without any doubt, that is in the house today, is your bishop. Oh, uh, you say, what do you mean? Ah. <laughs> in 1979, at Abu Abu Dumari Grammar School in Ijebuibo, he was my little boy. But the little boy came to me at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, shaking a little bit, and gave me some written documents. Flamboyant lifestyle. It contains 28 prophecies. Of course, he just wrote everything together. It's me as a mathematician. I took this something, and I began to write it down. Uh, prophecy number one, number two, and 28 of them. Eh? Talking about unbelievable things about the future of my ministry. Of the 28, eh? 27 had come to pass. <laughs> so, yeah, we know there are prophets, there are prophets. There are prophets who will tell you it will rain in June. <laughs> we, we all know it will rain in June <laughs> if, we are, if we have not offended God <laughs> It will rain in June 1979 One by one by one Incredible things 27 of them had come to pass <laughs> I'm waiting for the 28th. So, that I, so if I'm looking for a prophet, I know where to turn. Mm, I know. I know. But I'm not a prophet, but occasionally I too do hear from God. And that's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> so I was uh, driving. And suddenly God began to speak to me and said, Sir, do you remember one convention you had? And a woman from Ijebubo came to the church. And all of a sudden, she ran out of the church and they began to call on the fellow who brought her and said, Mama Lagbaja, Mama Lagbaja, I want to go home. Bring my bag. And the friend said, Why do you want to go? I want to go. 
Uh, okay, if you want to go, come and take your bag yourself. He said, no, I can't come. He said, why? He said, there's fire there. Flamboyant and then God said, do you remember a situation when you were preaching in Eloring? And there was a woman who ran out of the church. The ushers followed her, and they said, well, what's the problem? He said, she had been demon-possessed. She'd been looking for a way to be free. And then she came to the church. And while the pastor, pastor was preaching, her dress caught fire. I said, I remember. And God said to me, son, when was the last time you saw that uh, kind of manifestation, raw manifestation of the power of God? I said, I, Lord, you know we are big now. <laughs> and there are all manners of uh, testimonies, you know, big ones, <laughs> uh, dead people rising, uh, etc. Et he says, son, you are not answering my question. When was the last time you saw fire? Naked fire. I said, Daddy, I'm sorry. It's been quite a while. He said, do you want your fire back? I said, I will do anything. Anything. I will pay any price. I believe God is talking to someone. Flamboyant lifestyle. So he told me what to do, and I did. It wasn't long after that. I was ministering at the camp. I had made the altar call, and people were rushing forward. When on of a sudden, there was fire at the very top of my head on the roof. The fire was burning. It was on tape. And people were expecting me to move out of the way so that the uh, firefighters can do something. But I just stood calm. I allowed the people who were coming forward to come. And funny enough, those people, too, they didn't run. They saw the fire, but they came and uh, we finished all the procedure. You give your life to Jesus. I, said, I handed them over to the counselors before I moved out of the way. And then the uh, firefighters very quickly got uh, a ladder climbed up to put up the fire. When they got there, there was no fire. Bishop Isaac Oyedepo also brought a statement whilst he was preaching. He made that understood that who is God's prophet whilst he was preaching. He was trying to let us understand who is God's prophet. Let's listen to him also. God's word speaks to our lives in him. And the word is light, and that light is the life of men. And that light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So God's word speaks to our lives. And God's prophet speaks to our moments. They show up at each time to unveil the mind of God concerning us. They hear a word from the Lord and they, re they push it out to us. And God sends prophets to speak to our moment. In Luke chapter 4, verse 25 to 27, there were many, many widows in Israel. Unto none was Elijah sent, but unto the widow of Zarephath. There were many many lepers also in israel unto none was elisha saying but unto naaman the syrian so god sends prophets to deal with the issues of the moments in our life israel had been languishing in bandage in the land of Egypt and at a time God sent Moses to address the issues of their moment come now and I will send you down to Pharaoh that thou mayest bring out my people out of the land of Egypt 
Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 10 So prophets are sent to speak to a moment There are people here today That the forces sitting on your destiny Will suffer torture Every anger of the adversary against your life Will they turn back on their head today? Because that is the prophetic word for the moment. In Exodus chapter 4 and verse 22, he said, Go tell Pharaoh, thus said the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto you, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill thy son because I must free my son. <laughs> Whatever is resisting your freedom must go down today. That is God speaking. He said, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son. How many children of God are here in the house? Okay. And let my son go. Take your wicked hand off my son. And if you don't let him go, I will kill your son. If you remain stubborn, I will kill you. And he did. Not only Pharaoh's son died, Pharaoh died. The host of Egypt was swallowed up in a moment. God has a vow regarding your freedom. Amen. And anyone that says no must pay for it. God has covenanted to get Israel out of bondage after 400 years. And you say no, who are you? After you are saved, whosoever the son of God shall set free shall be free indeed. So anybody say, what do you mean? He will know the meaning today. Anybody who says, What do you mean? must know the meaning today. Anybody who said that is nonsense, he will know that it's full of sense today. Because the fire of God will descend on the camp of your enemy. This freedom will come with instant proofs. It will come with instant proofs. It will come with instant fruits. God did not only destroy the firstborn of Egypt and the host of Egypt. God set his people free in a grand style. Amen. Their liberty was instant. Their liberty was total. Man, those fellows who are feeding for free for 40 years. Just wake up in the morning and food is ready on the table. Their legs were not swollen. Their health was totally cared for. Their clothes did not wear out. They were being clothed from heaven. They were being clothed from heaven. They became a son and a wonder and the fear of them fell on all the nations round about. Your freedom is ordained to be total in Christ. You are not permitted to be struggling no matter how many witches are in your village. Therefore, on this covenant day of vengeance, God's jealousy is teared up. And your enemy will come under his wrath. The witches and wizards that are oppressing your destiny will pay for it. Yeah. Engaging the power of faith for fulfillment of destiny. God speaks according to his divine wisdom and not our limited human reasoning. Even if God opens the windows of heaven, shall these things be shut up? When God says it, His full capacity goes into action to deliver it. 
everything that makes God God goes into it to deliver it. And that man, limited human reasoning, cost him his life. You remember the story in Second Kings chapter 7 and verse 1 and 2. The prophet said, This time tomorrow there shall be surplus supply of food on the streets of Samaria. And that great mind on whom the king leaned the supreme advisor of the king the man who knew a lot of international relations the man who knew about diplo diplomacy and how to deal nation to nation say so even if god opens the windows of heaven by all reasoning this is an impossibility prophet shut up we are dealing with practical issues and the prophet said you will see it happen but you will not taste of it and suddenly food invaded the streets and the man was trampled under feet and died. You know, the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth and by understanding as he established the heavens. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 19. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts. Isaiah 55 verse 8. How manifold are thy works, O God? In your wisdom has thou made them all and the earth is also full of thy riches. Psalm 104 verse 24. So God's wisdom has unlimited capacity to deliver God's purpose. Unlimited capacity to deliver God's purpose. There is no doubt that divine wisdom came to play in building this tabernacle. The mobilization, the implementation process, every, there was nothing technical. It was all divine. God's wisdom has unlimited capacity to deliver God's purpose. Don't ever measure God with man. God and man are far from being on the same plane. God's wisdom has unlimited capacity to deliver God's purpose. As thou knowest not how bones develop in a woman that is a child, so thou knowest not the ways of God that make it all things. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5. Prophecies are not philosophical assertions. They are divine verdicts. By myself have I sworn, said the Lord. The Lord of hosts has sworn, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I purpose, so shall it stand. Every prophetic word is a divine verdict. As Christians, what we believe in is the scriptures, whether we like it or not. The Holy Bible was inspired by God through our ancestors, which they are records of histories and miracles. The revelation has been located within the holy scriptures so that's what we believe in so if someone is trying to let us understand that there are things that is not valid in the bible we don't need to accept it prophets are no more because god has spoken through jesus christ in this end time thank you very much for watching this video and i'll see you another time